Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Yeah, you may notice my reaction here, but I just witnessed a horrible and pointless generic remake of one of the greatest horror and psychological thrillers of all time, and that is Jacob's Ladder. As you know, I previously reviewed this a long time ago of the original and still the best from 1990 that Adrian Lyne directed written by Bruce Joe Rubin which starred Tim Robbins as a Vietnam vet who suddenly becomes a postal worker but he too actually had a family but, he, but his whole life was in turmoil. He had to live with his girlfriend. And the fact that he's beginning to see some hallucinations and visions of demons, ghouls, and, and all the way around. And he was hoping that he was not the only one that suffers this problem. That his army buddies might experience the same problem. It might have came from a drug that a chemist had gave them. So, or the fact that this follows a mystery between life and death, like an interpretation of Taipin's uh, Book of the Dead. Yeah. And this was uh, Tim Robbins's excellent performance. I loved his character. I really definitely saw exactly what this character has been going through. It has a great cast, you know, headed by actors like Elizabeth Pena, God rest her soul, uh, Danny Aiello, he also got uh, Ben Rains in the film, Jason Alexander, yes, from Seinfeld, uh, and even Macaulay Culkin is in this film in an uncredited role. I mean, who would have thought that Macaulay Culkin would be in this before he had a a huge success during the same period of Home Alone. Who would have thought? So this is almost a <laughs> the beginning of that. Now this was a very nice Blu-ray that I picked up uh, uh, back in 2015 at Target and I did do the review of the film uh, back that same year which I only had to use a webcam so I figured why not and it does have all the features as you can see in the back and if I'm going to show you this all again <laughs> yeah okay but the fact is this movie actually had an inspiration for the Silent Hill video games which also in turn became a movie adaptation and they had a sequel to follow too Yeah. So what was the purpose on doing a remake of this? Exactly. Because the remake is nothing compared to this. All they did is just, they borrow elements from the original and just go for a different cast and then just comes up with some ridiculous twists and turns. Let's put some bad CGI in there, some really awful digital technology. And the subplot just doesn't make any sense. Whereas this film make more sense than ever before. I know people criticize the ending, but the ending work for me. Yes, maybe they could have added some of the deleted scenes and put it inside the film, because it did have a scary scene. And that's the thing. The original film was very scary. Intense. But it's also emotional meaningful, truthful. This was an excellent filler. You know, and, and I'm just glad to see that people still remember this. You know, people do talk about this film. But I feel like this movie de deserves a whole lot more. Of course, hopefully this will get a 4K uh, remaster someday. I mean, I know Lionsgate will put out all these uh, 4K Ultra HD releases, so I'm hoping 
sooner or later this movie will get one. So anyway. <laughs> See part of me just really wish I could talk about this film more than having to waste my time talking about this remake. I mean who couldn't forget the wing demon scene during that dance scene, you know, with uh, Elizabeth Pena's character, uh, Jesse. I mean, yeah, she was like going around the, doing a sexy, sensual dance, bumping and grinding, while all of a sudden it reveals a, a wing demon. You see, um, you see like a, a guy who actually has a 360 head spin. I mean, you gotta love that technique that they did. And um, there are other scenes like that too. I mean, you see all these ghouls around, all these uh, demons. You see all the ones uh, with the head, the 360 head spins, or any of these other, um, or the scene where they actually took Jacob straight to the hospital, you know, for an operation that's that they're gonna perform on him. And then you see all these organs, uh, all that blood and everything. And once uh, they took him straight into it, I mean, wow. And then you even saw a guy doing the 360 head spin uh, without his um, limbs and and his um, arms. I mean, wow. This is really scary. Scary shit. And I can't lie. I saw this movie as a kid, and I was uh, terrified. I actually ran straight into my room when I saw this. I mean, when we rented this uh, a long time ago. So, yeah. But, nevertheless, um, I love the movie. I really do. The remake just can't do any fucking justice to it. Because I'm sorry, but Michael Airlay doesn't uh, match Tim Robbins' excellent performance here. No, no doubt about it. I mean, geez. You definitely know what he's what he feels here. I can't even feel anything about uh, Michael Ailey's character. And yes, he's the co-executive producer of the film, so he should take the blame. And the rest of the other cast joining in, including Jesse Williams, who was previously in a film called The Intruder. Yeah, that's another bad film that came out this year with uh, Dennis Quaid, which is a total ripoff of Pacific Heights. Even Pacific Heights is a way better film. Yeah, and I did enjoy Pacific Heights, uh, I'll be honest. I mean, it did have some issues, but that's okay. I mean, I still love Michael Keaton, and I do love um, you know, Melanie Griffin, and even Matthew Modine, even though I, I did actually have problems with his character, but you get the idea. Uh, okay. I know, I'm going on and on. I mean, there was just no need for this. But I saw the movie. I'm not the only one. I know uh, Matt, a.k.a. Whamograph for Life, actually saw the movie, too. Because he's a huge fan of the original. And I don't blame the guy. I mean, although I do disagree with him on his review of Alita Battle Angel, but I don't want to get into that. I mean, I, but I do have full respects on him. I don't, I don't want to be like one of those guys out there who's just going to lose respect, okay? Hey, I mean, he's going to start recommending other stuff too nowadays, or other times, you know, maybe he'll start uh, understanding. But that's fine. I mean, it's it's his choice. I'm, I, I'm not going to back down on that. I'm not stupid. Okay, I don't I don't want I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm still going to be friends. Um, but with that aside, yes, I don't blame him for this because I can understand what he's coming from. I mean, I would feel the same way about the remakes I've seen in recent years, and, and I've been pissed. I mean, I just saw the Lion King remake for crying out loud, and even the Pet Cemetery remake, and I'm even Suspiria, which I haven't reviewed. <laughs> I, I would be surprised for Child's Play, too, because, because I'm not looking forward to this. But whatever, man. It just continues with the cycle. Oh, well. Okay. Well, I know I'm taking so goddamn long because it just... It's just this... It's just the original film never gets any respect it deserves, man. And I hope it does continue to get more respect. 
so I know how everyone feels. So, anyway, the movie stars Michael Airlay, Jesse Williams, Nicole Beharie, Carla Sousa, Guy Burnett, who looks a bit like uh, Adam Scott with the side of Ashton Kutcher, Michael Aaron Mullican, Ben Bladden, Ruben Bidow, Kevin L. Johnson, Julia Ballantyne Larson, Richie Koster, and William Tokarski. It's written by Jeff Ruler, Sarah Fork, and Jake Wad Wall. That's based on the original script of the original movie by Bruce Joe Rubin. And it's directed by David M. Rosenthal. Yes, there's going to be spoilers in the movie, but this is a warning for you guys to stay away from this garbage and just stick to the original. So, anyway, but here it goes. Um, the movie begins where we meet a, uh, a random guy who was beginning to see some hallucinations. You know, he was totally uh, terrified and suddenly goes straight into the, the alleyway. He, he drinks... Um, some alcohol until suddenly he's being uh, choked or strangled by two guys in hoodies. I mean, you don't really see it um, through the audience, but suddenly it shows you that he's being choked and it looked like he was vomiting. So now they, they took him straight uh, out of the alley and took him goodness knows where. But suddenly we wind up going straight into the Afghanistan desert where we begin to meet Jacob Singer, played by Michael Airlay, which we learn that he's actually a military doctor. He was just cooling off, you know, taking out a, a can of Bud Riser. He even has an iPod right there just listening to music, some random rap music. And hanging out with the two doctors around until he had a, an emergency call. So he went straight into the uh, operating table, you know, just performed some surgery from one of the soldiers who were uh, attacked uh, during combat. But he didn't learn that it turned out to be his brother. Yes, Jacob actually has a brother named Isaac singer who's played by Jesse Williams and it turns out that he actually was killed so part of that was a flashback while he was on the operating room you know working on a patient we also learned that he's married uh, with his wife who's played by Nicole Beharry and they also had a child together Jacob, however, was dealing with uh, PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, and he's been getting it uh, ever since uh, he was at the the Afga ever since uh, he was at Afghanistan while he was serving for everyone. He then visits um, Lewis, who's played by Richie Custer, who happens to be a psychiatrist. You know, trying to help out his problems that he's been getting, how he couldn't stop thinking about his brother. So he's trying to fix all of that. So he's trying to help him out. How he keeps seeing all these flashbacks and some hallucinations here and there. I mean, we begin to notice that too later on. And in fact, surprisingly enough, even the psychiatrist even the, <laughs> quoted the, the line directly from... <laughs> directly from the original film, yes, which is uh, Miser Eckhart, to how he saw hell. They knew they were going to do that because of for fan service. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah, I mean, you begin to ruin such a great speech uh, coming from the chiropractor who was played by, um, played by Danny Aiello. Seriously, filmmakers and <laughs> screenwriters. Okay. Anyway. So a lot of unsolved issues with Ike. Um, 
I was just going through uh, phrases here and there where where it just leads to um, all the situation happening. But that's where um, he meets another veteran named uh, Paul Rugger, played by Joseph Skahora. Wow, another Joseph. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but he tells him that his brother was alive the whole time. So he really wasn't dead. He's actually straight into the subway tunnels in New York City that he's, he's now actually a homeless vet hanging out with all the homeless people around even the homeless uh, veterans too so this is where everything just seems to go completely wrong when we begin to see an intruder that just invaded uh, his house he is trying to trying to go after him, but then we begin to learn that this intruder is actually one of the guys, uh, or at this rate there was two people, but it just keeps going on, um, who happens to be the the demons um, underneath those hoodies, and they're the ones that keep saying, "Shut your mouth." Yes, and you actually hear that again too or maybe three times, and they even tell him, I told you to shut your mouth! Oh, God. Um, sorry. <laughs> Just gonna keep it safe there. But, he then took uh, one of them, put him inside the trunk, so that way he'll be able to take him, to, just to show him to the cops, who these guys were, until suddenly um, he found out that it escaped or it wasn't really there at all uh, from the trunk so so part of this might have been his uh, imagination but then he meets the he meets Paul again and he takes him directly to the subway before getting pushed uh, pushed off and and got run over straight from the subway train by some random uh, old lady uh, with uh, dark eyes yeah because he did spotted some random people even carrying a lot of uh, bodies or so so he calls the cops he tells them what happened no one would believe him so then he decided to go straight into the subway tunnels to look for his brother so he did found him He's alive. You know, Ike. So now he took Ike straight to his house to help him out. And his wife was uh, very pleased. So everything was going fine until... But he was trying to explain to Ike um, what happened. You know, while he was over there. And, well... He tries to explain it, but then suddenly, well, you know, they were giving him some breakfast for him to eat. Um, yes, uh, this is just like in the original film, only this time it's Ike, where suddenly he's bleeding through his nose. He started to shake. Started, you know, he's already, uh, he's already heat up. So now they have to take him directly to the tub put some cold water and then pour some ice on him so that way you know he you know he'll be able to recover from the heat that he's getting because now you know that he's, he's beginning to see some visions and hallucinations we learned that he actually got that directly from a mysterious drug that he was taking that Jacob had found and he's about to show that uh, yeah in that scene alone I mean Come on, man. At first I thought it was going to be Jacob, too. But, well, actually, th we're going to get to that story afterwards. And it's just going to go on and on. Um, but, with, but first, though... God, I'm getting so... Ugh. But first, Jacob takes the drug, and he was about to go 
directly to uh, Hoffman, who's a veteran agency pharmacist, played by Guy Burnett, and he's trying to search what was in the drug and how did they get all these uh, PSTDs, you know, which causes them to see all these hallucinations and visions of all these demons around and, and ghouls and even those guys uh, with, in hoodies that are demons and all this other weird shit going around. The whole problem with this is that the the whole problem with this whole process is that they're not so sure if everything is either real or this is just part of the hallucination that they've experienced. And it just continues to go on to there's like a chase scene that's happening. Uh, then there's the twist and turn that was going on. Because now we begin to find out that just when the Jacob just went all the way down to the lab just to find where Hoffman is and trying to find out about the chemical because he gave it to him and, and then he was trying to find a way to uh, find a way to cure them it seems to be because unfortunately uh, his uh, lab office was empty and then we begin to spot a, uh, a janitor who's actually uh, mopping yeah, wearing his headphones, you know, listen to music, and then, then you see some blood on the floor, you know, mopping, and then, it, and then he's there's like a stupid jump scare. Yeah, there are jump scares in the film too. It's a really bad CGI all the way, and, and that's where we begin to, see, yeah, where he's about to attack Jacob, and this is where we begin to see all these flashback memories of when, when the. Which was supposed to be Jacob at first, I mean, because Jacob is, uh, you know, he's already wearing a military suit, and you know, joining in with his brother Ike, he's up on stage, we begin to learn that he's going to get married to uh, his wife, but this is the, this is the big surprise here, though, was that, yes, it turns out that all this time, Jacob was the one that was getting PSTDs, and he's beginning to hallucinate. He's been the one that was taking the drug, and he was the one that's suffering from all this, and not Isaac. So Isaac was the one who got married to his wife and child, and, and oh my fucking God. Which, if because at first, um, before this whole thing happened, at the beginning, um, he was trying to help um, Isaac out because he's been suffering from this. You know, he couldn't speak, and and it, he wanted his wife and and child to actually go straight to the hotel so he could be so they could be safe. So that way, Jacob can help uh, his brother out. You know, trying to find out about, trying to go through all of his things to see what was happening. And where did he got the drug from, and how this whole thing happened. But he ran away, straight back to um, the same place, uh, and he was about to take the drug, and all that. And then it's like, oh, this just goes on. I mean, they had a big fight, because he begins to find out that... Um, that Isaac um, was with her, and then he's beginning to see some hallucinations too, and all of that. And it, and then, as I'm going to go fo forward here, because we've seen all these flashbacks, um, Jacob uh, suddenly was, you know, just in the bathroom, you know, just feeling a bit nervous. So then he was going out. Then we found out about Isaac, who was up on stage. Just, uh, just proposing for his wife, and this is where all things happen. You know, the twist and turn. Now he is the one that's suffering this, and now he's beginning to find out that Isaac's been married to his wife the whole time, and now they're trying to find a way to fix all this. And so he comes in with uh, Isaac straight to um, <laughs> to Hoffman. 
and this is where we begin to learn the whole truth about this. And oh God! So of course Hoffman became <sighs> Hoffman was trying to find a cure to stop this, but all this was just a bunch of lies. They, you know, they're just treating that, all the patients around like lab rats, and. Yes, Hoffman was about to take out the gun and was ready to shoot one of them. Just when the Isaac was about to call the cops, then Jacob just try got shot and then tried to push uh, Hoffman straight into out into the window and and fell out of the building and just landed onto the pavement. So they're both dead. And that's where we get the scene where, which, oh God, which, during the middle of the scene, because, because um, Jacob was already chasing someone, almost got run over, basically got run over by a subway train, but we learned that he was already dead at this point, and then he, he was taken away by a nurse who happens to be the old lady who pushed uh, the veteran off and <laughs> the movie ends this way where he's now inside the, the field <sighs> oh god oh! <sighs> these fucking filmmakers these fucking writers, I mean, what the hell were they thinking? I mean, what were they thinking when they had to take an excellent, uh, scary and psychological thriller and turn this into, which is about the interpret, which is a modern interpretation of Taipan's Book of the Dead, you know, focusing between heaven and hell, you know, life and death, and just turn this into a crucial joke. I just don't understand. This um, the cinematography was very. It's just typical digital. The cinematography of the film is not well lit. It's all uh, digital, as you can tell. It's poorly paced. I mean, this is actually has a shorter running time this time, instead of. Um, a nearly two hour film. The score that tries to mimic uh, the original score by Maurice Jarhe, a better score from the original, and they had to fuck this up. They, they had to fuck this score up. I mean, it doesn't seem to work much, much at all. And then they had to put in a stupid rap song. The cast themselves, I mean, including Michael Airlay and Jesse Williams, are terrible. Uh, they, you can pretty much tell that they were just there for paychecks, and or the fact that these guys can't even show any emotion whatsoever, or they try to show emotion. Well, I think Jesse Williams, on the other hand, that's another story where he plays Jacob's brother Isaac, known as Ike. I mean, I, I can't even believe that for a second. I mean, he's showing no emotion. He's always, like, all mean like that. The wife just did nothing for me, either. Or any of this other crap. Um, not even the, the chemist. Or at this rate, well, the pharmacist. It has a lot of bad CGI scenes here and there. They even got a scene where it tries to be like in the original, where, you know, the the most memorable scary scene of all was when they had the uh, the wing demon going straight, that's um, appearing, and that, that started to appear directly from uh, Jacob's uh, girlfriend, uh, Jessie. Well, this time, uh, Jacob actually goes to, you're going to love this, a prostitute who actually knows him, 
we learn that he actually had sex with her. They even he even took the drug. Yeah, he got injected by it. And then suddenly we revealed a hallucination scene where she becomes the wing demon. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, they just put layers and layers and, and all this other stuff directly from the original. While they're trying to make this movie not become a carbon copy or, or shot for shot even. Like they just want to go for a different story. And that's what they did. They changed the storyline, adding some twists and turns and all this other crap just to make this movie look good. And they don't look good. It's it's all over the place. And it had a really bad ending too. That didn't work. You know, Jack Roller. Sarah Forp and Jake Wadwall should be ashamed of themselves for writing this abysmal screenplay that doesn't do any justice whatsoever. And David M. Rosenfall, either come up with better ideas or stop directing bad movies, especially remakes. You know, Jesus Christ, I mean, this, this, this movie has a quality of a bad Screen Gems thriller. That's what it has. And I can pretty much tell because most of the producers were had worked on some Screen Gems uh, thrillers that were really terrible. Even in remakes too. Oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, I can't believe I watched this fucking mess. I watched it from the beginning to the middle and the end. And I had to take the risk. I feel bad for people who have seen this, or for those who haven't. But I say for those who haven't, this is your warning, guys. Don't watch this. Okay. This actually premiered on Dish Network. It actually uh, was delayed uh, a few years ago. Yes, because this was announced. It actually announced it, I believe, when I after I bought the Blu-ray. So I knew this was going to happen. I just thought they were going to cancel the project, and I hope they were. Well, it turns out that yes, they did film it, and it was on delay until they had another company uh, pick this up. And they had to go straight through selected feeders and, and video on demand. Because <laughs> that's probably where they belong. But I saw the movie, and boy did I have. Why? What's the point, man? Just, just watch this movie. Watch the original film exactly the way it's supposed to be. You know, you're definitely gonna have a great time with this. I mean, yes, it's scary and intense, but it's also very spiritual, emotional, very truthful, meaningful. Whereas this piece of shit remake is a fucking joke. I mean, again, Michael Airlake cannot match Tim Robbins' excellent performance whatsoever. In fact, no one should. And you know what? Matt is right. He should have won an Oscar for this. He should have been nominated. I don't understand. See, this is why the Oscars blew it. Because even has the line, you know, the most frightening thing about Jacob Singer's nightmare is that he isn't dreaming. And rightly so. And you see everything you hear. And the quote says the best, visually scary, by Jan Mauslin from New York Times. And I totally agree. Also, the special effects in the original film still holds up. What? Why can't people just use practical effects these days? In terms of being? Because the remake isn't even that scary. 
It's just your typical jump scares that you see in today's horror films. That's the thing too, man, that they're really missing out on. But then again, even with practical effects, it's still going to be a bad film. It's just the script is abysmal, coming from free writers. Don't know anything about this film. If it bit them in the ass. I mean, they might as well just watch bits and pieces of the film and just mostly from their iPads and just come up with their own ideas to make it work anyway stick to that don't bother with the remake so anyway I give this piece of shit remake horrible and pointless of Jacob's Ladder Maybe perhaps they shouldn't be called Jacob's Ladder. Maybe it should have been called Isaac's Ladder instead. But I know. What else, what else could they do? And I give the movie zero fucking stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye!